everybody, it's Brad from Ellicott City Sovac. And today I'm going to teach you how to use the edge to edge quilting function on the new Solaris Vision and Solaris that has been upgraded to a Vision. Um, so, this is a very, very easy solution for someone who doesn't have the room to have a long arm but still wants to quilt their quilts. Um, now, we've always been able to do edge to edge quilting uh, on an embroidery machine, but what makes this different is how much it automates things and how easy it is to go from uh, one piece to the next piece to the next piece. Um, the, the machine really takes a lot of the guesswork out of doing this and it, uh, it makes lining it, lining it up just such a breeze and making sure that everything is rotated right. Um, I did an entire panel uh, with this technique earlier today to make sure that I kind of, you know, had the, the, pro, the whole procedure down. Um, and let me grab my, my sample here. Now, the uh, the top of this isn't the greatest. It's kind of hard to uh, it's kind of hard to see the stitching on it uh, just because of how busy the top is and the fact that I didn't choose a very dark colored thread. But if you look at the back, you can really see the edge to edge that I did on this um, and how nicely that all lined up. Now I I um, I decided that for my video, what I'm going to do is just use a solid piece so that it's really easy. Uh, and clear to see both the projection that the projector puts on the fabric and the stitches as they're put down. So you can see how close I get to perfection for each join that I do. And um, it's, it's, you know, you may not get it exactly dead perfect for each connection every single time, but you know, I got it more than 50% of the time on my sample here. Uh, and it's just a matter of practice. Uh, so let's talk about, uh, preparing your quilt sandwich uh, before you do this. Now I'm doing a, a very small size uh, edge to edge design here just so that my video doesn't take all night uh, for me to shoot it. Um, but you can do any size up to 118 by 118 uh, inches. Uh, now this one is 24 inches by 24 inches, but you want to make sure that the first thing you do is measure how big a space you have so that you know and write that down so that you know uh, how much room you've got. Um, when you're putting your quilt sandwich together, you want to make sure you've got a, a good six inches of batting on uh, on the outside of it. It's really important that you give yourself a generous amount of batting so that there's always going to be something for the magnet to grip when we're using your uh, your magnetic hoop, which that's what we're going to be using uh, in this video. We're going to be using the 10 by 10 magnetic hoop. It's possible to do this in any hoop that you want, but the new 10 by 10 hoop really makes it, it, it easy. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do is uh, put some kind of tape around the edge of your, uh, your, your quilt top to the batting. Uh, you don't want the embroidery foot to hook the fabric and pull it over like this. Um, so what we do is we put a piece of, of tape. Now, if you don't have the specific embroidery tape, like I've got this uh, Kimberbell embroidery tape that works great. OESD makes one. Uh, Floriani has one. Um, but if you don't have anything like that, in a pinch, you can use blue uh, painter's tape. That's actually what I used this morning because uh, when I started, there wasn't anybody that sews around to <laughs> tell me what the right thing was. Uh, but uh, this is what I'm going to use, this Kimberbell um, uh, embroidery tape. But anything that is... Um, like a light adhesive uh, tape that's easy to tear stitches uh, away from is going to work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put my tape down on this. Now this, this tape is uh, a little over an inch wide, the Kimberbell tape here, and I'm basically putting it so that it is essentially half on and half off of my material. And I'm just smoothing my material out as I go to try to make sure I don't end up causing it to be buckled or anything. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing coming down the next way. Move my pins out of the way here. And uh, yeah, by the way, you do want to pin this uh, unless you're using like a feasible batting or something you want to make sure that you pin it. We'll take the pins out as we go, as we do the design. Looks like I am almost out of this tape stuff here. I'll see if I get, if I have enough on this roll. So I don't have to open a whole new one just for this. 
Not quite. <laughs> I ran out. So I'm gonna have to open one. I actually managed to find an open uh, Floriani embroidery tape. So this is pink. Uh, it's the same same idea. Stuff works the same way. Uh, I'm gonna put it down here. The, um, the advantage of the Kimberbell one is you can see through it, but I'm not really that worried about being exactly perfect. But there we go. We've got my uh, we got my fabric taped down and we're ready to go to the next step. So the next step is gonna to be to go ahead and get my 10 by 10 uh, embroidery hoop and uh, hoop the block. Um, and I'm gonna show you the way to line it up to do that. Okay, so this is my new uh, 10 by 10 uh, magnetic frame. Um, so I'm gonna begin by removing the magnets from it. Uh, if you have trouble removing these by hand, the, um, the hoop does come with some little, it comes with a little flippy piece that um, pops the magnets off really easily. I just usually use my hands though. Uh, but if you don't have the same kind of finger strength that I do, you can use the tool that comes with it. And what we're looking to do here is we wanna place the top left-hand corner of our quilt in the top left-hand area of our frame. We want it to be inside, If you, I know you can't see it from there, but there's little marks on the hoop. That's where the embroiderable area begins. We wanted to make sure that this corner is inside the embroiderable area. Um, and uh, so I can kind of eyeball that. I'm gonna put the hoop underneath in roughly the spot where I had lined it up and go ahead and put my magnets on. And these magnets just drop on like this. They're, they're pretty easy to take on and off. And once we get it so that it's lined up, we, can, we could have taken these pins off before doing this, really. We go ahead and pop my pins out and take these ones out too. Okay, get the rest of these magnets in here. The magnets have little arrows on them. You wanna make sure that they're facing in But there we go. This is now ready to bring over to the machine and, uh, and get started um, with uh, creating my, my edge to edge design. So let's, uh, let's go over to the machine now. Okay, so here we are at my Solaris Vision. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the hoop in. To get the hoop on the machine, you wanna glide it through this gap right here. You see how that fits right through there? and then we're gonna slide the hoop in, just like any other hoop, it pushes straight in. Uh, and then I'm gonna gather up the bulk of the rest of my sandwich and just kind of roll it a little bit off to the side like this, just so that I know that it's not tucked underneath of the hoop and it's not falling down into the embroiderable area either. Um, so that is how we get it hooped. And now let's go ahead and build the design on the machine. Okay, so to access the edge-to-edge -edge quilting section in your Solaris Vision or upgraded Solaris, we're gonna to go to Embroidery, and then it's in this Q section here. We're gonna click on the Q, and then in section four are your edge-to-edge -edge designs. So these 10 designs here are the options that we have, and if you select it, it will come up and give you a preview of what that is going to look like as a repeating edge-to-edge -edge design. Um, now. There's a bunch of these, uh, 10, uh, in fact, and I actually really liked the sewing machines and notions one that I did uh, before. So I'm gonna do this one again. And so when you find the one that you want, you just hit set. And then if we, uh, if we measured our quilt top, uh, then we have the value that we need for this section. So um, we want to, because we're doing edge to edge, we're gonna want to have some of the stitches on the batting so that it does edge to edge. So we want to, to tell it that it's a little bit bigger than it actually is. So I measured it, it was 24 inches by 24 inches. So I'm gonna tell the machine that this is actually 25 inches and hit set there and 25 inches and hit set there. So the length and the width I've set for an inch more than, um, than we measured. Okay, that's gonna allow for it to be bigger uh, than, the, than the measurement that I got. Uh, and then for flip option, we can choose how this is going to do the repeats. Now, the way that I did my, uh, my sample was I mirror imaged it and I thought that that looked really good. I could also flip it so that each one is flipped upside down. So we could do that. We could also flip and mirror it. 
Okay, so maybe we'll do that because I didn't I didn't do it that way uh, in the last one. This time we'll do a flip and mirror uh, so that I have uh, something different to look at while it sews out. Uh, we say okay here. And then the last step is to tell it uh, what the hoop we're going to use. So this hoop uh, is the 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths hoop. So we're going to go to the right one. And there we go. Now, what this is going to do when it has all this information is it's going to size the design so that you can get the most amount of repeats in your hoop at the biggest size and still be easy to move the the fabric left and right and have you know enough leeway that you're going to be easily able to make sure that the the design continually fits in the in the hoop uh, as you go um, so it does that math for you you don't have to do the math you don't have to figure out how many pieces across how many pieces down it needs to fill in this this uh this design it does that for you and if you choose to have it do a flip you don't have to manually go out and keep telling it okay i want this design and then i here's the flipped version and so on and so forth it will bring up the correct version of the design automatically as you go which is awesome and a huge time saver if you've ever done edge to edge embroidery before without this uh, all right so uh once we're satisfied with this we're gonna hit next and on this screen, it just kind of basically confirms uh, the total amount of pieces that we've got are 15. So that's going to be 15 individual times that I have to move the fabric in the hoop. Um, and uh, we can also change the color down here if we wanted to, or we could change it from a single run to a bean stitch, a triple run stitch if we want it to look more bold. I'm going to leave it as a single run because I don't need it to be super, super bold. I think we'll be able to see it just fine, and that would just make it take longer to sew out. Um, so at this, at this stage, we're going to hit memory, and that saves the design onto the machine. And if I hit OK here, then it'll automatically select um, the, the category to bring up the design. Uh, and then we, we want to pick the one in the upper left-hand corner. This is all individual pieces that we don't use that. The machine is going to use those. We don't pick those ourselves. We pick this one. That's the top left one that has a, a little number down there. That's the number of designs that are kind of built into that design. Uh, so you just want to make sure that that's the one you pick and hit set. The machine is going to prompt us to put the fabric in the way that we put it with the, the fabric in the top left uh, part of the hoop. Uh, and uh, and then it just tells us to put the embroidery frame on. If you hadn't at this point, it will tell you to do that. It won't let you go farther if you don't. I'm gonna say okay. Now, the first thing that, we, that it wants us to do is move the top left corner where we want the stitching to go and it will show us where that is using the projector. So I'm gonna switch the view so that it's looking uh, in at the, the machine bed so that we can see what the projector is doing. All right, I'm gonna hit okay. And it's gonna move the hoop. And right now, this crosshair, this green crosshair is where kind of the, the box that would be, you know how when you have uh, uh, an embroidery design selected on your screen. There's like a red box around it. This is the top left-hand corner of that box, essentially. And what I want to do is I actually want to have this kind of on the corner of this piece of tape and this piece of tape, all right? And that way, I'm kind of guaranteed to have it so that my, um, my, my quilting is going to go off of the edge of my, of my quilt top, uh, like you would have for edge to edge. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to move the the projection over so that it is all the way out here and I've got this level with the top of my tape is how I'm going to use the top of my tape as kind of like a marker and that's going to help me keep my uh, quilting straight as it goes across here that's going to help me uh, set what uh, what my rotation is and make sure that my fabric is rotated perfectly straight. So I don't know whether you can see it, but this is just right in line with the top of my tape here and right in line with the edge of my pink tape here, right? Now, when I hit OK here, this is going to start doing my rotation. This is OK. We're going to check for rotation. And when we say OK, it moves me up to the top and I got to make sure that this is now in line with the top of my tape, which it is not. And so I have a rotation button on my screen where I can rotate up or down by a tenth of a degree at a time, which is really all I ever used this entire time. I used the one tenth of a degree at a time. And we're gonna use that, so I'm gonna go ahead and look over here, zoom in nice and tight, 
and we'll rotate this until it's perfectly in line with the top of my tape. I need to get closer so I can actually see it. Okay, so now that is perfectly in line with the top of my tape. I'm satisfied that this is uh, the positioning and the rotation that I want. And so I am just going to go ahead and hit OK on my screen. I'm gonna hit OK. It moves to uh, where it wants to, to sew and at this point, I am ready to just start sewing. So um, I can see over here that this is going off into the tape section. That's great, that's exactly what I want. Uh, I am now going to, here I'll zoom out a bit. I'm gonna put my presser foot down, light turns green, and I'm gonna hit the, uh, the start button and off, it, off it's gonna go. Something interesting that I found out today is that while the machine has the, um, the magnetic hoop on, uh, if it's a baby lock magnetic hoop and it knows that it's using a magnetic hoop, it will limit the maximum speed of the, uh, of the embroidery unit um, so that you don't overstress the little motor that's in there uh, with the weight of this big hoop and the weight of a whole quilt. So something interesting. If you think your machine's going slow, it is. Okay, now what's it doing here? It's actually sewing out a little calibration registration mark and we are going to be so thankful for those when we get to the next row down <laughs> because it makes, it makes making the rotation and, uh, and the placement of each of the, the next design so much easier. But okay, so uh, that looks amazing. Let's zoom out a little bit and see what we're working with here. So we've got the end of my design is here. This is where we're going to line up uh, the start of our next design with. Um, so on the screen it says embroidery is finished okay to connect the next pattern and I am going to say okay. Now the way that I've been doing this is at this stage it's telling me to rehoop the fabric to the right side and give me like a picture of how it expects me to do this. I find that it's actually easier if you hit okay and then hit OK again. And what that'll do is it's going, it's going to shine a little crosshair where it, it has the beginning of the next stitch already. Okay, so like the, the kind of the default location for it, which if you're trying to figure out where in the embroiderable area you are, it's a lot easier if you can see a point that is definitely in the embroiderable area, and that's what this is. So this is kind of like a target for me to move this fabric over. If I have this somewhere close to this, then I know that I'm pretty close to being in the right place. So let me zoom out and you can watch me uh, re-hoop here. So the first step is gonna be to take off the magnets on the sides. And then I'm gonna wanna take off also the big magnets on the bottom, and if my little magnet's on this side, I need to move it over to this side. So we'll see that in the next one, because these are, I'm gonna move over here. The next one, we're gonna have to move those. It's not a big deal though. Oh, I meant to left to leave that one on there, oops. All right, now, to, to move my, my fabric, all I have to do is grab it firmly and slide it down. Now you can see that I've just moved this way too far. All right, and that's why it's really handy to have this projection on. That's when we hit okay twice, that gave me this projection. So I can see, oh no, I've gone way too far. I need it to be somewhere around here, okay? And I should be able to easily move this to there, all right? And now we just move our magnets over and replace all of the other magnets. Remember that the magnets have a little arrow facing the way that goes in towards the inside of the hoop. Okay. 
Now, I'm ready to move using the move arrows here. I'm ready to move where that projector is showing me the, the first stitch is gonna be. Now I'm gonna use the arrow keys to move this. Now what I'm looking for is I want it to be overlapped just a little tiny bit to try to get it as perfect as possible. So you want it to look like it's a little too far in. It's hard to see it from far away. That looks like it's pretty close to dead on. So let's just say that that's okay. I'm gonna hit okay. The next thing it'll do is prompt me to check the rotation. I'm gonna say okay, I'm hitting okay on my screen again here. I'm not gonna move the camera, but I'm just hitting okay. And now we can see that I got cattywampus here. I'm above the tape now. I need to move down in my rotation. So I'm gonna use the rotate down by one degree. I will go ahead and uh, look at the cam, look at the screen so you can see that. So I'm using down by one tenth of a degree. This one here is the one I'm hitting. And now once this is down far enough, once this is flush with the top of my tape, uh, I put the foot down. Uh, no, I gotta hit okay, I'm sorry. On the screen, I have to hit okay. Then I can put my foot down and hit start. And we'll see just how close I was. That's pretty dead on right there. I mean, that's, that's pretty seamless. And that's how it should be. Okay, so it finishes this pattern. It's gonna sew out my registration mark. Now these do have to be ripped out when you're done, but it, it didn't take that long to do the, the one that we did earlier. And we're ready to connect the next pattern. Okay, so I am going to uh, hit okay on my screen, and then I'm gonna hit okay two more times. So it's gonna tell me to, yeah, go ahead and, and move that fabric. But instead of moving the fabric now, we're gonna say okay, and okay, it's gonna show me with the projector about where to move my fabric to. Uh, I'm gonna remove my magnets. And I intentionally, I could have moved the small magnets back over um, before I, I finished hooping, but I figured I'd just show you. You can very easily move these without messing anything up just by Kind of putting a little pressure on it and sliding it over. All right, now we want to get this so that it's somewhere close to where this is, okay? So we grab my fabric and we go ahead and slide it down. I want to keep it roughly square, but remember it's not that important that you have it perfectly, uh, perfectly even. Uh, you know, if it, gets, if it gets slightly off a of rotation, that's, that's taken care of by this machine, all right? So we've got that. This time I'm gonna go ahead and slide these guys up this way. And then I'll put my long ones back on. Remember, if you need to smooth out your fabric, that, these things are great for that. Okay. I can now use the move keys on my screen. Remember, I've got move keys on my screen right here to place this crosshair perfectly on the stop point for my previous pattern. So let's go ahead and do that. Remember, I like it to overlap just a little tiny bit. It should be a little bit further to the left than you think it should be, in my experience. Okay, so that looks fine to me. I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask me if it's okay to start doing the rotation. We're gonna say okay to that. And we can see we are a little bit rotated. We're a little bit out of rotation, so we need to rotate it down with that tenth of a degree with the down arrow. Okay, and then I hit OK again. And we put our presser foot down. We hit the Start button. 
And there we go. Let's see how I did. I kind of did that one looking through the eye, the camera. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, I got it dead on again. I told you, with a little bit of practice, anybody can uh, can nail that every single time. Which, if you've ever done uh, edge to edge quilting in the hoop, it's it's it takes like five minutes for each one, at least for me, to get it so that it's like within one stitch. Okay, this is awesome that you can just nail it every single time to get your, uh, your, your repeats. I mean, you can get it seamless on the top. It, it's, it's crazy. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's almost as good as doing it on a long arm. <laughs> it really is. And we are ready to line up the next, uh, ready to line up the next design. Isn't this easy? I mean, it, it, it is. It's, it's crazy easy. Um, I think it's, I think it's easier significantly than doing the, the border thing, uh, from the, the Solaris 2. Um, I, I just think it's easier to line, line these up. Um, there's just something magical about the way the way this this works it's it's so easy all right so i'm gonna shut up all right okay to connect connects pattern i'm gonna say yes okay and uh now it remember it's gonna ask me to go ahead and hoop it we're not gonna do that we're gonna say okay twice okay okay then we take our magnets off leave our two small magnets we grab our fabric and we Advance it until we're somewhere close to that. Okay, good enough for me. I'm going to use my move key. That looks pretty good. I hope I'm not getting sloppy. We'll see. We're gonna rotate it and say okay. Pretty close. Still needs to be rotated down a little bit. Okay, I've hit okay. I put my foot down. I hit start. Let's see how we did. Oh, it's dead on again, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I feel vindicated from when I did my first video, the one that I only put on Facebook. I, uh, I, <laughs> I couldn't get it to link up, and I just left it in the video. But, um, you know, now that I've done it a few times, I can, I can really get it every single time. It's, it's, it's that easy. It really is to get it perfect. I'm, I'm so pleased with the way that this works. It's, it's astounding. And also, just the fact that it allows me to bring in these rotated versions of the design without having to choose a separate design every time I do it. I mean, it's just wild. Now, you, you may be thinking, oh, Brad, why are you using a hoop that is square for a design that's rectangle, that's a rectangle? Well, if I have a design that is gonna fit perfectly in my hoop, then I don't have anywhere near as much leeway up, down, and left, and right um, as I do with this, where I've got a design that, that you know, can be moved quite a bit inside of this hoop. Um, so, you know, if you, if you have to keep re-hooping because you have not enough space to position your design easily, then you're gonna end up wasting time that way. Uh, but yeah, it is true that I could have done this in way fewer uh, hoopings if I did it in a bigger hoop, but I feel like the 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 less aggravation, the better, and also kind of the more intricate this this looks, the better. Also, really, um, uh, so that's my two cents on you know why do this in the ten by ten hoop and not in the seven by fourteen hoop if I've already got one of those, or uh, you know try to do it in the in the really big like maybe I've got the dime. Um, uh, 10 and 5 8 by 16 hoop and yeah that would be great because it wouldn't take nearly as much time but you would 
have a lot harder of a time lining things up, I think, uh, to get them uh, perfectly rotated right in there and have them have everything fit. All right, it's going to do my um, it's going to do my uh, registration mark here, and then uh, we're on to the last pattern of the first row. Um, and uh, so here, I'm going to show you a different control that we have. Um, so just in case you screwed up on your measurements, you can you can compensate for that uh, using this tool that I'm going to show you uh, once I get my fabric moved. So we remember that what we do here is we say okay, and then it's going to tell me to go ahead and rehoop. We're going to ignore that and say okay two more times. Okay, okay. It shows me my projection of where the start point of the next design is going to be, and we go ahead and move our magnets out of the way again and we once again pull our fabric down okay until this lines up here and this folks this is why you want to have all this extra batting here okay if this batting ended right here this side of the of the fabric this side wouldn't be held at all right now Okay, so you want to always make sure you have this extra batting. I made that mistake with the one I did earlier, and it was a pain in the butt uh, because I had to um, do some gymnastics to kind of get it to work. So let's go ahead and put our magnets back on. Okay, and so the 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 button that I want to show you is is actually on the um, it's on the next page so let's it's on the rotation page so let's go ahead and uh, let's move the start point I think that's too far to the left let me get a little closer to it looking at it through the camera is hard okay that looks that looks fine to me uh, and now we're gonna hit okay here and so what I want to show you is if your if your design Zoom in. Oh, it looks like I need to do this. If your design doesn't go off the edge of the fabric, uh, let me hit OK on the screen here. Oh, it does though. Never mind. So, but you see, you see how my 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 fabric, the design is going off the edge. We that is what we want. Here I'm going to go ahead and do my rotation so that this is in line with the uh, with the top of it. So I'm going to rotate this down. Really got that one all cocked up, but oh, I see my it might be a little crooked that way too. That's all right. It'll it'll all work out in the end. Um, but if if this the point of what I wanted to say is if this stopped somewhere in here where it's showing me this corner and this this was not sewing over the edge of the the design what we can do is we can stretch the design out with this so if we needed more design that way we can stretch it out like that uh, and you can do it in any direction that you might need to do it so that if I miscalculated um, with how big my design was I measured it wrong and I end up with this not going on the outside so it's not truly edge to edge um, then we can compensate for that. So uh, that is something that's important to know. Uh, at any rate, let's go ahead and sew our last iteration of this. Say okay, foot down, hit start. Dead on again. That's great, I'm so pleased. You can see that my um, my fabric's a little rumpled in here. It probably wouldn't have been the worst idea in the world to smooth this out a little bit. Um, I'm not super worried about it just because I'm, you know, I'm really just doing this for, for demonstration purposes. I'm not trying to uh, win any awards or anything. Um, I probably could have done with a little bit of smoothing of that though. So it sings a little song. It says, okay, embroidery is finished. Is it okay to connect the next pattern? We're gonna say, yeah, okay. 
Now it's gonna tell me to completely rehoop because we're starting a new row. So it's telling me here that I wanna make sure that I get my positioning markers, my little registration marks visible in the hoop. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, just like I did before, I'm gonna say okay to this. And then I'm gonna say okay again. And it's gonna move this. So when I rehoop, I wanna make sure that my positioning marker, so the equivalent of this little guy from the very first one, that positioning marker is visible right there so that I'm pretty close to, uh, to you know, being perfectly lined up when I do this. Now this time we're gonna take every single magnet off of this thing. And I'm gonna move my whole quilt. And the thing I'm lining up with is this little teeny tiny guy right here, okay? I just wanna make sure that that is somewhere close to this cross here. It doesn't have to be exactly dead on or anything. Uh, you just wanna make sure that it's, you know, that it's reasonably close to it, because we can move it. I'm just gonna go ahead and get some magnets in here to start securing the fabric down. And I'm gonna, again, use the arrow keys to line this up so that it is in line with my positioning marker there. Now this isn't nearly as important to get dead perfect uh, as when you are doing the, um, the lining, the linking up of actual uh, start and stop points. Uh, and then when I say okay here, it's gonna bring me and do my rotation. I'm gonna say okay to do the rotation. And then what we want to do here is just make it again, just like we did with the top of the, um, the tape. We want to make it so that this is perfectly level with this, which it essentially is already. I mean, I could move it by a tenth of a degree here or there. I think it doesn't really make that much difference because it's pretty straight in there. So I, I managed to hoop it pretty straight, so that's good. We say okay. We put the foot down. Now, what if... What if I had said okay and I wasn't actually ready? Here's a thing that happened to me earlier. What if I had, I said okay and I, oh geez, I forgot to rotate it or I forgot to move it and it went on to the next screen. That's okay. All you have to do is go to layout and then choose whether you wanna move it or you wanna rotate it. So if I had got off of rotate and I didn't mean to, I can hit rotate, it takes me right back there. I can see exactly where it was and we're good to go. Uh, so that's how you get back to that, by the way. I meant to mention that earlier and forgot. So here it is. We're going to say okay and put the foot down and start it up. And here we go. We've got our next row down on our edge-to-edge -edge design. And it's going to come right up just perfectly close to the bottom of the other one, but not cross over it. So uh, just go ahead and let it sew out here. Okay, okay, so you guys just saw that happen. I was standing right here, so I was able to stop it. This is what happens if you mess up your tape. And so I actually, you see there's a little lip of it right here. I, I should have gone back and pressed this down. Uh, I saw that it was a little rumpled, uh, and then I forgot to smooth it back down. You want to make sure that your tape is totally smooth, because otherwise this will happen. It can get caught in the edge of your foot, and if this happens, we're going to need to cut the thread. So I'm going to hit the scissor function on my, key, on my machine to cut the thread. And this is why you don't want to walk away from these while it's doing this, because that is a possibility. Um, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to push down on my tape here, get the little piece of tape that ripped out out of there, and I'm going to go and back up to where I can see the stitches being messed up, which is right there. So on your machine, that's the needle minus plus button here, and then I'm going to go back. So I'm going to hit back 10 stitches basically at a time until I can see see if I can get this thing to focus where I want it to. There we go. Until I can see that I've overlapped this little area that I messed up. 
Okay, so we can see the crosshair is now over an area that is good, and we're gonna move forward one stitch at a time. Right about there is where I think it starts messing up. I'm gonna push down on my tape real good, make sure that it's not gonna pop back up. Put the foot down and hit start. Nope, not good enough. I'm just gonna take this tape, this tape off of here entirely. It's done its job. That should solve the problem. So that's, a, that's always a danger when you're sewing onto and off of a piece of tape, is that if that tape comes unsecured from your material, uh, then, you know, it could potentially catch the, the embroidery foot and that can lead to uh, something being messed up. Now, luckily, if that happens, it's gonna, it's gonna be right on the edge of your edge-to-edge -edge quilt. And I mean, to get rid of that, I could cut off like, I don't know, ba barely a quarter inch uh, of the, the total edge of the quilt there. Um, so I'm not really worried about it at all. But it is, it is a good argument against walking away from your machine while it is doing one of these designs, or at least while it's doing the edge of one of these designs. Um, you want to uh, be a little careful. All right, time to advance my fabric. We're gonna hit okay. And it's gonna tell me to rehoop. We're gonna hit okay twice more. It gives me my crosshair. And we're gonna move the fabric. Okay, I'm repositioned. I uh, use my move keys to move the start point. I'm gonna say okay. And then it's gonna ask me to rotate. Line this up so that it is in line with this dot. Looks pretty good. Say okay. Foot down. Hit start. Yeah, baby. Okay, time to move my fabric again. Uh, we're going to hit OK. Uh, it's going to tell me to rehoop. We're going to hit OK two more times. OK, OK. That gets me my crosshair. Take the magnets off. Use the move keys to line it up. And it's going to ask me to rotate. All right, say OK. Foot down, start. And away it goes. Okay, folks, you know the drill. And we move it to line it up. And we rotate it to make sure that it's straight. A 
Boy, how did I get it so crooked? I managed, I sure managed to though. Okay, and thus we'll end another row. Uh, we're gonna say okay to connect to the next pattern. Uh, it tells me to rehoop. We hit okay twice. Take the magnets off. I'm gonna try to square it up a little better. See, I've, I'm like I'm like crazy rotated here. Remember, this is where we got to be careful where this edge of the tape is. Although I find that the Kimberbell one is a lot better at this than the Floriani one. Uh, it seems to it seems to stick a little bit better, and I actually find it easier to rip the stitches out through it too. So, in as far as I recommend one, it's going to be the Kimberbell. But like I said, I mean painters tape will work too. It's basically what the Floriani one is: is pink painters tape. You see where it just went over where it's rumpled right there, and it didn't didn't skip a beat. That's because this this tape is a little uh, a little more forgiving. All right. So what happened is I ran out of bobbin thread. So when that happens, it is handy to hit this button here to move the hoop to make it easier. to make it easier to get it out of here. So I wanna make sure that we've got clearance right here cause that's how we're gonna take this out. So we're going to unhook it, bring it out through here. Now I can change my bobbin. Put it back in. Of course it has to happen like right at the very end of the design. All right, we hit okay. And we start her back up. Luckily it's right on the edge, so you'll never see that that little knot that happened there. Okay, and now it is time to go down to our uh, third and final row. It's going to do these last two registration marks for me. And I'm ready to rehoop. You say, okay. And I'm gonna hit okay again twice just so that I know where to line up my uh, line up my uh, positioning markers. We're going to take all the magnets off this time. Remember, just somewhere around it doesn't need to be exactly perfect. Okay, looks good to me. Line that up. Looks good. We're going to hit OK. Check for rotation, okay. Using my rotation one degree, one tenth of a degree at a time till it is, remember we're not trying to put this on that. We're trying to get it in the same, you know, we're trying to get it lined up kind of on the same horizontal line as this bar here. Uh, and that's good, we say okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take this pin out of here. And remember, we always got to watch this pink tape here. So we're going to put this down, hit start, and away we go.
I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna tell me to rehoop. We're gonna hit okay twice. Gives me the crosshair. Take off all the magnets except for the two small ones. We'll line up our start and stop point. I'm gonna try to do this quick so I'm not gonna zoom in for you. Okay, that looks pretty good. Check out our rotation. Make sure that that lines up. Okay. Flip down. Okay, time to connect the next one, say okay. And hit okay two more times. Okay, folks, one more and then I'm done. I get to go home. All right. All right. So last one, we are going to uh, hit OK and then I'm going to wait, hit OK twice more. OK, OK. Take off the magnets one last time. Let's get her lined up. You know, I think I nailed just about every single one of those connections on this one. So I'm pretty proud of myself for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, this <laughs> this is really, this is really so, so easy. Um, I hope that you can see, because I just did this in all one unbroken thing of me just doing it. Uh, I hope you can see how easy this is, because it really is, is super, super simple uh, to do this. There you have it, she's all done. No registration mark this time because that is the last design. The machine knows it, it says finished embroidering. And that's it, we did a whole thing edge to edge and it was super, super easy. Uh, so yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. All right, let me uh, take this off of here and we can look at it a little closer. All right, well, there you have it. We've got my edge to edge design is complete and it looks fantastic. So. Uh, the only thing that has to be done uh, as far as the inside of the design goes is picking out these stitches. They're pretty easy though. You just basically uh, can use just a seam ripper or a pair of snips or something. So these calibration marks, they've got like a little knot on the underside. It's hard to see because of this muslin under here, but there's a little knot. You just take a seam ripper in there and cut it. It's no big deal. Uh, and then you can pick it out from the top. Um, but the, the joins on all of these are pretty much seamless. Um, you know, unless you get really, really close, uh, it's, it's very hard to tell um, where the joins were. Now this little part up here that got messed up, that's unfortunate, but you know, we could just cut, cut it down like about an eighth of an inch and not even see that. Um, since it's edge to edge, you know, we're gonna be cutting this away from, from that anyway. Um, now I also see that I didn't quite get off the edge down here, and I think that I just chose to go a little higher than was necessary up here, or I could have given it an extra uh, inch, so I could have told it that it was 26 inches um, instead of 25 inches uh, tall to accommodate for that. But, you know, I mean, I'm close enough to the edge that I'm not worried about it. Uh, I think that this looks pretty awesome. 
All right, guys. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you uh, realize how easy it is to do this, um, this edge to edge on the Solaris Vision. I mean, it's it's mind bogglingly easy. I'm I'm so glad that they came out with this and that it is is this easy to do. Anybody can do this. I'm telling you guys. I mean, I made it look easy. I know, um, but I made it look easy. It is actually easy. I didn't have to do anything. I mean, that's why I just went ahead and filmed the entire thing. Just so you can see, st start to finish um, how to do this. Um, it is it is very, very cool. Um, you know, I mean, not everybody can have a 12 foot long long arm in their house. And this gives you the a lot of the capability of, of something like that. Um, being able to do uh, edge to edge of unlimited size. Um, so. Hope you liked the video, uh, and I do plan, I'm going to give you a sneak preview because I plan to do another one. Uh, this is my sample for doing the multi-position embroidery, okay, where we've got, this is all one design, I mean it goes out, outside the frame, I mean it's huge. This is like a three foot tall embroidery design, and this is one of the ones that's built into the Solaris. This also was extremely easy to do. Um, you know, it was time consuming because it's a lot of stitches, but uh, this was really easy to do. So we figured we'd make a sample out of it, make like a little apron, you know, a little chef's apron. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so if you want to see this up close, it's here in the store, so come in and check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.